Have you ever been frustrated debugging a complex problem with no good error message? Have you ever wished something would just tell you exactly what was wrong and how to fix it? Then extended diagnostics might be right for you. Howdy, my name's Doug Parker, and I'm an engineer on the Angular tooling team. I'm here today to give you an NG update about how Angular's new extended diagnostics feature will simplify and streamline your debugging process. Extended diagnostics are a new feature in the Angular compiler, which flags coding patterns known to be error prone. This is done by emitting detailed warnings during the build. It is also highly configurable and fits into your team's existing processes. Consider this example where I want to display the user's favorite fruit. I've got a favorite fruit component with a two-way binding to accept the name of a fruit and display it. I'm using this in a separate banana component to display my favorite fruit, bananas. So I'm passing in the string banana to this two-way binding so it can be displayed to the user. Now, let's check out what that looks like. Oh no, the app is trying to show my favorite fruit, but banana disappeared for some reason. Ah, eh, well, let's check for an error message in the console. Ah, there's no error message there either? What could possibly be wrong, and how can I figure this out without any more information? Well, as of Angular 13.2, you'll now see a warning on the banana component. The Angular compiler clearly calls out that something is wrong with my template binding and gives a detailed error message explaining exactly what's wrong. In this case, my two-way binding was backwards. We call this the banana in a box error, because the banana, referring to the parentheses, should go inside the box, referring to the brackets. You see, it looks like a banana, and it's in a box, and it's clever, trust me. Rearranging the parentheses and the brackets removes this warning and fixes my application. Now I can tell the whole world about my love for bananas. Banana in a box mistakes like this are easy to make, yet hard to debug. And this was a simple example, but imagine the same mistake in a large component with five inputs, a dynamically computed fruit value coming from a service, and passing through several pipes. It could take hours of trial and error to narrow down the issue. The extended diagnostic cuts through the noise and gets right to the problem. Now you might wonder why the compiler flags a banana in box mistake as a warning and not a hard error. The reason for this is because getting the two-way binding syntax backwards is technically valid. It's actually an event binding with a name that just happens to start and end with brackets. This could happen with native DOM elements or custom web components. Extended diagnostics can catch these kinds of coding patterns, which are technically valid, but highly error prone. Cases where you think your code is doing one thing, but it's actually doing something completely different. We've got one more extended diagnostic for you to check out. Here I have a component which shows the current user name. And if I don't have a user, then I use the nullish coalescing operator to default to admin. I mean, what could possibly go wrong with assuming the user's an administrator? But as it turns out, I don't even need to default to admin because username will never be null or undefined. That's not obvious from looking at this component on its own, but extended diagnostics are type aware, so it can notice that get username returns a non-nullable string, so the username property is non-nullable as well. I can fix this issue by removing the nullish coalescing operation and reducing the complexity of my code. Thanks, extended diagnostics. By the way, I've been showing you squiggly underlines added by the Angular language service VS Code extension, but you can also see the same errors in your terminal when running the Angular CLI. Now that you have a better understanding of extended diagnostics, let's talk about how they can be configured. By default, extended diagnostics are displayed as warnings and don't block your development workflow. These diagnostics are intended to give a strong signal when something might be wrong with your code. Different people and teams often have different preferences about how strict diagnostics like this should be. So while extended diagnostics are warnings by default, you can configure them to whatever severity is right for your project. To do this, open your tsconfig.json file and add an extended diagnostics object under Angular compiler options. Now add a checks object, which allows you to list out specific diagnostics and what severity you want to use for them. In this case, we're treating a banana in box diagnostic as a hard error, which fails the build. Meanwhile, any nullish coalescing issues are suppressed and ignored entirely. Now my build fails from the banana in box error, while my nullish coalescing issue is hidden. You can also specify a default severity to use for any diagnostics not explicitly listed 
with the default category option. For example, I get two-way bindings wrong all the time, so I appreciate banana in a box being a hard error. But other diagnostics might not be as critical, so I can suppress all others and reduce the noise in my terminal. Now, custom severity is awesome, but often developers want a middle ground. I know I like a local workflow that's relaxed, flexible, and doesn't get in my way. But I also appreciate a code base with strict enforced standards, which avoids these kinds of error-prone patterns. I don't care about a useless knowledge coalescing operator when I'm aligning CSS, but I do care that my reviewer doesn't see all my messy temporary code. So here's a neat trick you can do with the Angular CLI to get forgiving local builds and strict continuous integration, or CI builds. First, make a new file called tsconfig.ci.json in the root of your project. Then make it extend our existing tsconfig.app.json and set your favorite extended diagnostics to error. This means we now have a tsconfig identical to our existing one, but with extended diagnostics overridden to be more strict. Second, open your angular.json file and find your build target. This likely includes some initial configurations like production and development, which override certain options in that builder. Add a new configuration called CI, which overrides the tsconfig option to point to our new tsconfig.ci.json. You can now add the dash dash configuration CI option to the Angular CLI, and it will build with your new tsconfig using stricter options. But since this isn't the default, Plain CLI commands like ng-serve will continue to treat these diagnostics as warnings. Finally, update your CI jobs to include configuration CI to enforce consistency for pull requests while leaving your local development workflow flexible and keeping you in the zone. If you're like me and prefer to make things as strict as you can, you might be tempted to use default category error. This is a great option, but keep in mind that the Angular team may introduce new extended diagnostics in minor release versions, meaning it won't perfectly adhere to semantic versioning. Check out our docs for more information on this particular edge case. Now, I know what you're thinking. Extended diagnostics kind of sound like linters, formatters, or other static analysis tools, and I already have those set up, so how does this help me? Well, we're also big fans of those tools, and MIDI inspired a lot of the design here. There, but there are a few important differences to call out. Linters in particular are an interesting comparison, so let's break that down a little bit. Linters often raise issues which you probably want to address before submitting your code, but which might not be urgent or immediately relevant to you as a developer. Have you ever been in the position where your linter is flagging probably important issues, but you kind of have a production outage to fix? Right, we've all been there. Linting is incredibly helpful, but sometimes there are just a higher priority tasks that need our attention in the moment. Extended diagnostics try to be immediately relevant and actionable as you're actively writing code. A banana and box warning could be the reason some text isn't updating and be directly related to that outage I'm debugging. I want to know that right away. Linters also tend to be focused more on code style or maintenance issues and often grow to encompass any kind of checks you might want to run on your application source code. This is really powerful and gives a lot of flexibility in its tooling but it also means checks vary wildly in their purpose and usefulness. Extended diagnostics take a different approach and fill a much narrower use case. They specifically address correctness or performance issues in your code, and that narrower scope allows us to be more opinionated about them. You can see this in the last comparison point. Linters are frequently executed as commit or CI checks after you've written all your code. A lint check telling me my two-way binding is wrong isn't useful when I already wasted two hours debugging to fix that issue. It's just too late to be helpful. Linters typically focus on making sure your code is conformant with the existing code base. This is often a consequence of the broad and varied use of lint checks. Because extended diagnostics are narrower in scope, the compiler can comfortably escalate them to you earlier and trust that they will be relevant to your current work. Now, we know that many developers enable plugins for their IDEs to enable lint warnings in editor and that's a great option. However, this isn't ideal, as different developers often have widely varying IDE setups. Lots of low urgency checks will introduce significant noise, and an edit to one file might introduce an issue in another file that you don't see. Extended diagnostics integration with the build process allows these checks to be surfaced earlier and with less noise. Now, the line between a lint check and an extended diagnostic can get fuzzy at times. 
where any given check falls on this spectrum will vary. Some checks will be more useful in a linter, while others will work even better in an extended diagnostic. We don't see the system as a replacement for linters or other static analysis tools. Lots of useful checks don't make sense as an extended diagnostic due to the different trade-offs, and fit better into other systems. Extended diagnostics are simply another tool to leverage in the fight for maintainable code. Now, in Angular 13.2, we've already started with these two diagnostics I've shown you. But we're looking forward to expanding this system and adding even more awesome extended diagnostics to make you more productive. Some initial ideas of what these diagnostics could look like include requiring triple equals comparisons in Angular templates. We would also like to do more verification around internationalization and accessibility. This could include making sure the I18N attribute is used everywhere, as well as making sure that ARIA attributes are consistent and semantically accurate. We're also hoping to do performance improvements by requiring router link on anchor tags and rejecting negated async pipes. Links to all of these and more are in the description. Check them out and don't forget to upvote anything you really wanna see. This helps us prioritize the most valuable checks and motivates us to make them happen. Did you notice anything missing in that list? Maybe a cool idea for an extended diagnostic that you wanna see? We'd love to hear about it. Slide to our GitHub issues and make a feature request. We'll be happy to take a look. Now, this isn't the end of the story for extended diagnostics. We're working on adding support for VS Code Quick Fix and custom diagnostic support so you can write your own checks. We're looking forward to a world where you can ng-add your favorite library and immediately get comprehensive error checking to make sure that you're using that library in the best possible way. And did you know that one of the best ways to stay updated about all things Angular is to hit that subscribe button and click the bell to be notified about all the awesome new features coming to an Angular near you. You can also follow at Angular on Twitter for more excellent web content. Now, if you'll excuse me, this video has made me quite hungry and I could really use a snack. <laughs>